Welcome back tonight. The news we bring to you comes from a variety of sources and starts with a core group of multimedia journalists right here at 13 Action News. And so tonight, well, we are bringing you a rather rare look at how the news goes from an idea to actually being on air and then beyond that. And 13 Investigates reporter Joe Bartels now gives you the behind the scenes look. The pandemic has changed how journalists do their jobs. Most of the reporters here at 13 Action News, also called MMJs or multimedia journalists, are working from home, including myself. We follow Jeremy Chen for an afternoon on a behind the scenes look at making the news. There's no typical day as a journalist. Yes. Each one unique with its own set of hurdles and challenges. I have some story ideas, uh, possible story ideas ready to go. Jeremy starts his day by making phone calls from his bedroom, checking emails and reviewing information sources. Viable story options become ideas to be pitched to news managers in a virtual morning meeting at 10 a.m. Probably the second most prolific cockroach infestation I have ever seen in my dirty dining history. Reporters and staff take turns bringing information and ideas to the meeting for story consideration. Hey, great. Thank you. Uh, Jeremy. Hey, guys. Uh, just a few things. Uh, obviously, the, the big news of the day is the uh, impeachment proceedings that's going on up in Capitol Hill. After more than an hour of back and forth, Jeremy's story is assigned. The emergency declaration yeah. at... Uh, at St. Rose. On this day, Jeremy is trying to track down which hospitals will talk about capacity and COVID concerns. While he waits for confirmation of interviews, he's been told he needs to produce a story for the 5 p.m. newscast, which he will present live. Boom, there you go. And another story for the 6.30 newscast, which he will shoot what's called a look live introduction and tag. Yeah, microwavable food comes in clutch on a day in the life of a journalist. A quick bite to eat. It's 11.59, we got one fifteen interview, I'll make one more phone call. But the break doesn't last more than 10 minutes. Suddenly, interviews start falling into place. Sunrise Hospital and a UNLV professor have agreed to talk. I have to do my Zoom interview in the car anyways. <laughs> Jeremy is an MMJ and shoots his own video. 14-year-old Lexus. He loads here. up his camera equipment in his personal car. <laughs> and drives to a nearby park to conduct a virtual interview. Zoom is all ready to go, just waiting for our guy to come on. From there, he drives himself over to Sunrise Hospital and gets an unexpected surprise. So usually this doesn't happen at all, but today was a particularly lucky day. Uh, a photographer was available and he's gonna help me shoot uh, this interview at the hospital. Bye. Photographer Jim Flint will help shoot the interview. So I need you over here, actually. Okay, okay over there? Cool. Yeah, anywhere over here, though. That way, Jeremy can focus on asking questions and getting the facts. Like a, a plan in place to ensure, like, you know, your system, your doctors, nurses are not overwhelmed, you know, especially with, you know, however many patients are, are coming in. Uh, yes, we have a, a surge plan. The information gathered from hospital authorities begins to build the foundation of the story, but the news building process is lengthy. We're going to go to St. Rose. Oh, you're going to St. Rose? Because that's where the emergency is. I'll see you over there. The next light, turn left. A drive across town brings Jeremy to St. Rose San Martin Hospital. Just finished up, uh, you know, sending an update to the newsroom because communication is key in the communications business. That is journalism. KTNV reporters are required to check in with our managers and supervisors throughout the day to ensure the stories are coming together in time for the news. For the community is to protect themselves and what we encourage is masking. Jeremy has to listen to the interviews he's gathered, pulling out what we call sound bites and using the information to write his script for his TV story. So I'm just going, going over your script right now. All scripts written by reporters are reviewed by news management. I'm going to change a person to someone. That way when we get to the day part, it makes a little more sense. Yeah. It's a crucial step to make sure the news is accurate and includes all of the necessary information. We're making sure we're accurate with our information. He wanted to check on me where I got the information from. You know, I checked on myself. COVID has changed the way KTNV reporters work. Most of the time, it's in our cars or at home. And this day comes with another surprise. I got told I uh, am no longer uh, an encore look live at uh, 6.30. They're going to have me live at the 6. The change means Jeremy's deadline has moved up by 30 minutes. And now he must split his original story into two separate reports we call packages. One for the 5 and another for 6 p.m. So you're up against it now. It yeah. is now almost 4 o'clock. About an hour to, about an hour to go. Yep. Uh, what happens now? So now I have to track 
track the uh, track the story, and once I'm finished tracking, I have to start editing uh, the story on my laptop right here and send it over to the station. And once that is all done, I'm going to be going live. Three. Jeremy has to work fast with about an hour before the newscast. He uses his cell phone to speak or track his voice for the pre-recorded portion of his package. Once he's finished editing, Jeremy sends his 5 p.m. story through the internet so the video can air. My check, Jeremy. Check one, two, one, two, three. Yo soy Jeremias Chen en vivo a tres. Now it's time to prepare for the newscast. We use cell phones to call into the station to hear the broadcast. Where are my words? Where are my words? And we use backpacks, which connect to cell phone towers, to send live video from the camera. And 13 Action News reporter Jeremy Chan right now is live near Buffalo in the 215 with uh, all of this and what it means, Jeremy. Yeah, Todd and Tricia, it was here at the St. Rose Dominican Hospital in Southwest Vegas where that disaster declaration was made. Jeremy's story is a minute and 33 seconds long. Moments later, he concludes his live tag. We'll have more on that coming up at 6. Jeremy Chen, 13 Action News. As the sun sets, the process repeats again for the 6 p.m. broadcast. After the 6 p.m., we caught up with Jeremy. Well, how do you feel? A little bit exhausted uh, mentally, a little bit physically. You know, it's a, it's a stressful job, but, you know, very much worth it. No bathroom breaks, and lunch is a luxury. Nine hours into the shift, and it's not over just yet. All right, it's almost 6.45. We're back at Jeremy's apartment, and uh, the work continues. Jeremy still has to unload his camera equipment and begin posting his story to the Internet. <sighs> Slap it together, OTT. We have to do OTT again for our app and digital audience. The journalists at 13 Action News are also responsible for placing their video online as well as writing an online version of their stories as well. Jeremy also writes a shorter version of his story for later newscasts and must send an end of shift email to communicate additional details for the newsroom. Transfer and once that is transferred my day is finally done. A profession that's taxing, time-consuming, and can be dangerous, but it's a passion that takes courage and determination so others can be informed about their world. Joe Bartels, 13 Action News. Yeah, just an absolutely great look there from Joe, and certainly a tip of the cap to all of our reporters and photographers here at 13 Action News. As you just saw right there, uh, it is hard, hard, stressful work. They do it every day, and lucky for us, they are really good at what they do. Right, Tricia? Oh, absolutely, Todd. I'm exhausted just watching his day's work. A lot, a lot of work here. All right, well, the coronavirus...